Hi guys and welcome to the Proxmark 3 RDV4 installation video for Windows. What you'll see here is on the GitHub page for Proxmark's RFID research groups fork is there has been a change to the layout on the README page. We've now made it more clear for the installation. Uh, we've separated these out. They have their own folders and installation instructions within the repo. Also, the README uh, features some important information that you might want to have a look at. So firstly, step one, we want to head over to the setup and build for Windows. And if we have a take a look here, you will see that there are some actual prerequisites. One of them being that you need to head over to uh, Gator's repo of um, Proxbase. And this package will help assist you in the Windows installation. If you do get any installation problems with the main, um, please do fall back to the previous releases we have listed here. Right. So to get started, what we're going to have to do is install the required drivers for your Windows installation. Prior to doing that, what you're going to need to do is turn off the driver signature enforcement. So um, within Windows 10 and 8, they've turned on a feature where you can only load drivers that have been signed by Microsoft. Um, so to install less than official drivers, uh, unsigned drivers, um, what you need to do is go in and disable the signature enforcement. Today, I'm demoing on a virtual machine um, box, so there may be some difference. Um, it, I'm, I'm using VMware, and it's a Windows 10 Enterprise Evaluation copy, uh, but it should go through without any problems. Um, what I need to do, though, is I can go to uh, Advanced Startup Options, Head over there and press restart. So when I press um, the restart button, it's now going to start up in uh, troubleshooting mode. If we click this button, and then what we want to do is head over to advanced options. Right. So what we need to go into is see more recovery options and start up settings. And this is the one that we want, disable driver signature enforcement. So if we press restart, it will now give us a uh, list of options to choose from. And we need to now press number seven which will disable signature enforcement. Okay. So once we're logged back in, what we're going to need to do is plug in our Proxmark and it should recognize it as one of the COM ports. So let's plug that back in. And yes, I want to con connect it to my virtual machine. Okay, you won't have that step. And if we head over to Device Manager, We'll then see it listed. It's COM3. Excellent. Okay. So going back to the prerequisites required. If you haven't already got GitHub for Windows, um, head over to GitHub and install that because you're going to need that to grab the required repos. So if we head over to the Proxmate, Proxspace. You can either clone it or download it. 
what I've done earlier on, um, I've actually downloaded the zip and I've also um, pulled it within the repo. And as you can see, it's there. It does take a little bit of time to do, uh, to download, so I've, I've done that prior. Procspace itself has its own installation instructions here, um, but what we've done for clarity and so we can make sure that uh, we're giving you a full end-to-end -end service when it comes to the installation is we've detailed any instructions on the page. So all we need to do is work our way down throughout it. So after you've downloaded Procspace and you have that somewhere, you can do that either via GitHub or just downloading and extracting the zip. The next thing we need to do is head over to the RFID research group and get their code. So let's go ahead and do that now. And we can do that via GitHub desktop. go and if we clone it it doesn't take very long to actually grab everything so taking a little look through what we need to do is copy all the contents from the proxmark 3 folder and we want to put those in the procspace pm3 folder if you take a look here there's a pm3 folder and we need to copy over all the files from the Proxmark 3. Yeah. So that's now done. Okay, excellent. So you can either grab the file or just grab the files. I'm going to head into the Procspace folder. Just paste them in. Step number eight is to run the runme.bat file or runme64.bat, depending on the Windows architecture. So if we head up to the proc space here, we see that we've got those two files. So we're going to go ahead and do the runme64.bat. I've had a few errors there, so I'm not sure if that's because I'm on the enterprise valuation. <laughs> I've previously been able to download this on the um, home and professional and not had any problems. So this will take a little while to do and what we'll do is we'll head back over once this has completed. All right, thanks. One thing we can do whilst waiting for the um, requirements to download, uh, what we can do is head on over to the device manager and we can install the driver required. So if we go to update driver, we want to browse and then let me pick from the list of available drivers. So you click have disk and then what we want to do is go over to the Proxmark 3 driver, which is located in the GitHub repo. Go here, driver, click open and press OK. And you will get a warning box uh, come up and just to select, yes, it's fine. And it will install the drivers for you. Once again, if you get any issues at all, head on over to the Proxmark uh, forums and surely you'll be able to get some advice from one of the team. This will take about a good 10 minutes or so, so I'll carry on recording once it's all done. 
So that's all run properly and what will happen is, is you will have a little box up here just saying the following, you must start a restart shell to apply the necessary actions, it's the first run, brilliant. Um, we've got the drivers all installed, we've got Proxmark sorted with our repo, let's have a little look now. Um, so yeah, just to know, because um, we would be using bash, it's a forward slash instead of a backslash. Um, and the next step is to do make clean and make all. So this is where we'll do it. Is it going to let me do it? No. Okay, so I'll type this in. Um, make clean and make all and it will run through this for us. It does take a little bit of time. Once again, if you do get any errors, um, we can go to the other releases of the Proxspace repos. I'm just going to pause while this is going through. So the next thing we want to do, um, once that's finished doing its make, is to uh, flash the boot ROM image. And we can do that by using these commands. Now, I've got my Proxmark connected, and it is on COM3. Once again, uh, you can check with Device Manager to see how it's, it's come up for you. There are a few other the commands that you can use to find out which device it is. Um, for the moment, I've put in uh, COM3 and we're going to run this part. Excellent, so that's worked fine. And the next thing we need to do is change into the client folder and then let's get it started up. .exe and com3. Is that correct? Yep. Brilliant. So it should say the Iceman build for the RDV4 oh, with flash memory, smart card, um, and there we have it. We, we also have some other parts where um, you can take a look at. So if we head back up to the repo, if you scroll down, you'll see here there's a section now that says use of the Proxmark. Um, which has got validation of the Proxmark client functionality, then verification and configuration. It has some of the different commands that can be done. And then the commands and features. So uh, best advice would be to go through these and take a look and test it out for yourself. Okay, and thank you very much for watching this video today, and I hope it has helped you. All right, thanks. Bye.